do do right <clears throat> evening everybody it's still thursday 27th of october um and i'm still going through i'm going to do three tonight because i really need to get ahead of the game so <clears throat> um the third of the night we're still in spayside and we're still in the a's um and it is this one which when you saw the name um appear on the opening credits you might have thought or croisk um, as I did initially, to be perfectly honest, until relatively recently when I actually looked up the name and pronunciation of it. And it's more um, Okthosk than Okroisk. It's less of the kr and more of a th sound. So it's more Othosk, Okthosk even. Um, I'm going to struggle with this just like I did with Miyagi Kyo, but um, we'll see how we go. So. Um, Alta Vein that we did, Alta Vein that we did uh, yesterday um, was a relatively new distillery built in 1975, as is this, uh, which was built in 1974. Um, this is where it is in Speyside. So where we started with Abelau, we went down slightly south to Alta Vein, and now we're actually going to go slightly north, northeast, uh, but still not very far uh, to Ogthusk. Um, and um, Ogthusk is Gaelic for shallow ford across the red stream, um, which references a nearby, um, it's not even a river, it's more like a burn. Um, I can't remember the name of it. So the distillery was built by Justerini and Brooks, uh, J&B uh, blended whiskey you've probably heard of. And this was their fourth distillery after they'd already built Glens Bay, Nokandu and Strathmill. And um, apparently it was a, uh, a burn, God, I can't remember the name of it, was it Dorney's, burn, uh, Dorney's Well? Um, there was a, a spring that was discovered, essentially, and it was tested, very, very pure water, right, we'll build a distillery here. Um, and like Alta Vein, it was a distillery that was built essentially to produce malt whiskey for blends, blended whiskies, to satisfy the demand. Now, because Okthusk is not obvious pronunciation of Okroisk, it's quite a complicated word to look at and figure out how to pronounce. It became known as the Singleton. Um, now, JMB was eventually, through conglomerates and etc., was part of Diageo. And um, this was about the mid, mid to late 80s where Okthusk became Singleton. But Diageo then took the Singleton as a brand name itself. And right now you can find the Singleton of Dufftown, the Singleton of Glenord, which I think is Asia only, maybe even kind of like Taiwan only or something like that. And there was a Singleton of Okthusk as well. So Okthusk has become kind of not the singleton anymore and has now gone back to Uxthusk in kind of just after the turn of the millennium, but there was a singleton version as well. Because it's used um, for blends, it's a bit like Alta Vein, not a lot of it is available in bottlings as a single malt. Um, this particular one is the 10 year old Flora and Fauna version, which was a range that was launched by Diageo um, that was sort of semi official bottlings. It was, it, they weren't hugely available but they were if you want a thusk and there was um, when Diageo owned Blagnot there was a Blagnot version Rosebank a few others as part of this flora and fauna range so this is what the bottle looks like and all of the others the Rosebank the Badlock Blagnot the, the um, labeling looked very very um, familiar uh, familiar similar even uh, and familiar if you knew it obviously um, and this was basically the only way that you could get any kind of official bottling of it anything else is an independent bottling and even then there's not that much of it um, you, it's still available um, oh I should point out it was very generously donated by Chris and Lindsay Cook thank you very much to both of you for this um, I think you actually purchased it from drinks by the dram um, and got it sent directly to me you crazy fools but I'm very, very grateful and very, very humbled that you did that. Um, so the uh, the distillery itself is, um, it's actually got like 10 warehouses, but they don't just mature their own whiskey there. Um, they actually mature because of the size of the warehouses. They mature a lot of um, casks from other distilleries as well that are owned by Diageo. Um, and it's sort of, just because you've got a distillery doesn't mean it's matured there. There are island distilleries that will mature on the mainland of Scotland or they'll send it to um, other places, other warehouses, other companies that will store it on their behalf. So as romantic as it, seem, as it sounds for a distillery to be kind of almost growing the barley and malting it and then distilling it and then maturing it in casks in the warehouses next to where the stills are, 
doesn't really happen that way. A lot of it is almost the malt is bought in from another company. Sometimes even it's the jo job's half done for them where it's even like the mash is done for them and they literally have the still, they stick it in the still, the spirit comes off, they put it into casks and then it goes somewhere else to be stored. In fact, in some places it comes off the still, goes into a tanker and then gets transferred to a cask in a warehouse far away from the distillery. So it's, it's business, it's cutting costs where you can to make things more efficient so that you don't have to spend as much money making it and you can make more money selling it. Sad but true. So, um, it is bourbon matured, but apparently, um, I don't know whether it was the, the original distillery manager, but it was it essentially discovered that it wasn't quite good enough just to mature it in bourbon casks. So it does have kind of a year or so, almost like a finish in cherry casks as well, um, just to sort of round everything off and sweeten it. So it's been a long time since I've had a Ukthosk, when I called it a Kreusk. Um So yes, it's, it, it, I can't even remember what I thought of it, to be perfectly honest. So I'm going into this totally blind. Decent color on it. It is Diageo. If they've added coloring to it, they've not added a huge amount because it's not massively rich and dark. It's only a 10 year old, so it is entirely possible that they've put a couple of drops of coloring in. And it's, 43% as well. Um, I can't remember if I said how much this was. It's uh, Whiskey Exchange is selling it for 48 quid, Master and Mortar selling it for 51. Now, when we were selling the um, Flora and Fauna ranges at the whiskey shop 10 years ago when it was officially available, I think the Flora and Fauna range is now discontinued. It was about 30 to 35 quid because it was sort of a sort of an official bottling entry level range. So, um, it's pricey, you know, for a 10 year old, but the fact that you can't really get hold of it generally, yeah, you can argue that the price is maybe not fair, but is understandable. Hmm. It's slightly foisty, it's slightly vegetal. Difficult to even pick up kind of like obvious bourbon maturation. There is fruit there, but it's, it's kind of grapey, but kind of musty, and it's not that pleasant a nose, to be honest. It is quite vegetal. It reminds me a little bit of the vegetal notes you get on a Pinot Noir, where it's slightly farmyardy. There's a, there's a slight off note to it, which is just throwing me. It may be colouring. I'd su be surprised if it has that much of an effect on the nose, but... There is something slightly off, slightly artificial to this. Let's see what it's like on the palate. I'm hoping it doesn't come through. Fortunately, it doesn't. And it's actually quite pleasant. There's not a great deal to it though. Very silky mouthfeel. Not as syrupy as the Alta Vein that I've just had. It wasn't a syrupy thickness to it, but there is a silky mouthfeel. There's not a great deal on the palate though. It's slightly empty. There is a gentle maltiness to it. There is a slight toffiness to it. There is a bit of a heat from the alcohol. It's 43%. And arguably, particularly on the first mouthfeel that I had with the Alta Vein, where it was 50.2%, this doesn't feel that different in terms of an alcohol percentage. It's, there is a little bit of fire to it. Not a great deal on the finish. Really dies away quite quickly. I am getting malt more than anything else, which is nice, it's pleasant. It's a, a malty fudginess, but it's just a bit there. It's a bit, not blurs in, blurs in, it's just a bit flat and a bit, It's better than the nose. There's something not quite right with the nose, and that was that was newly opened. That was you know that that's not been sat around for donkey's ears with a, a dodgy seal. You know this is drinks by the dram, wax top, and everything. So I think this is how it's supposed to nose, and it's just there's something there. There's just a slightly off note. It's slightly like wet wood and plastic and Tupperware and just, it's just a little bit ropey. The palette is nice, it's okay, it's just not rocking my world.
um, it's a little bit soulless. It's just lacking some kind of depth or intensity. There's some maltiness to that. There's a little bit of fruit and it's it's kind of a, mm, is it apple-y? Not even that. Maybe kind of apples and pears, but more like poached or stewed apples. Yeah, stewed apples, that sort. There's a slight sweetness to it, which then moves into the maltiness. But it's just lacking something. It's just a little bit bland and a little bit missing. And it just feels like a more, more intensity of maltiness, more, not smokiness, it doesn't even need that. Just more fudgy character, more maltiness, more depth, more of a, almost a, more of a sherry influence to it as well to really kind of boost everything. It's okay. Is it 50 quid's worth? Not really, to be honest. Considering you could get two bottles of Abelau 10 year old for that, I know what I'd rather have, to be honest. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Is it worth searching out? It's interesting. Um, but I would not go really searching for it. And I'm not sure I'd spend that amount of money on it. But picking up one of them, probably worth giving it a go. Right, that's me done. I need to upload one tonight. So I shall get editing. I'll see you at the next one. Cheers.